Hey everybody, this is Logan Holdaway with Shepherd's Branding, and today I'm going to show you three ways to prepare uh, for print when you're using Inkscape. This is one of the most common problems that people have when using open source software, um, specifically Inkscape. There's not a good way to be able to create uh, CMYK ready files. And so there are some workarounds that if you're using Linux, um, they're going to be very easy. That's what I use as Linux. They're going to be very easy, access, acceptable, excuse me, accessible. Uh, you'll probably already have uh, what I am going to show you on your computer. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first method, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need this anymore. Uh, the first method is to go ahead and just export to PDF. This is a sticker that I am about to send to a printer. Um, and so this is the most simple method that there is. So first of all, what I do is I use Control Alt Shift S. That's the shortcut. Uh, in order to bring up this di dialog box, you can also go to File. Uh, I haven't used used this in a while. Save a copy. That's what it is. Shift Control Alt S. You can see it right there. That's the shortcut. But save a copy, and that will go ahead and save a copy within your um, within the file that your file is already saved. Excuse me, within the folder where your file is already saved. Um, the way that you select what file type you want it to be is with this drop down list right here. Uh, you can pick anything that you want. There's a lot of different formats that you can export to. Most, uh, if not all, really all uh, printers will accept a PDF file. And so you can go ahead and click on PDF. Some, uh, like if you're doing more promotional type items, um, EPS is better for that kind of thing. You can find EPS in that same list. But go ahead and just hit save and it will bring this up. I always go to convert text pads. That is a very important thing, and let me show you why. So if I go ahead and click on this, you can see that this is text. But if I, but if I go ahead and click here, the nodes don't show up because it's text. In order pre to prepare something for print, you always want your text to be a path. And the reason why is because uh, your printer doesn't have necessarily have uh, your font file in their computer, and if they don't, the the image is not going to display, display on their computer the same way that it is on yours. And so um, you can go ahead and uh, just go ahead and do this and go object to path uh, like that, and that will make these individual paths. I'm going to undo that. Um, but you can all, but the, re the reason why I don't do that is because when you go ahead and uh, want to go and make changes later, and you have to take that out and replace it with text again. Whereas if you just do the export uh, and export text to path at the time of exportation, if that's a word, um, then you don't have to go in and it's, it's just a lot easier. So just go ahead and save. Uh, make sure convert text to paths is a hit. I also would uh, recognize, or I, I would encourage, I, I should say, uh, rasterize filter effects. You should have that um, that box ticked. And I just do rasterization resolution at 350. Uh, printers accept 300, but uh, I just like to be on, especially on the safe side. I don't ever use this, and I don't ever I don't even know what this is right here. But if you hit OK, then it will go ahead and bring up or create a file uh, side one. And I always save my files as side one and side two. That's what I always do. Uh, and he, what you're going to see why in just a second. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Um, on Linux, you can right click. I'm using Linux Mint. Right click and do open in terminal. Uh, if you don't have that, then you can go ahead and navigate here in your terminal. But uh, I use this function a lot, so if I just hit up on the on the arrow within uh, my terminal here, then it pulls it right up. And this is called ghost script. If you're using Linux, then you already have most likely ghost script installed. Uh, everything that ghost script does, I really can't tell you. I'm n 
I really don't know, quite honestly. But this is the command that you want to type in. GS stands for Ghost, Ghost Script, and it has all of these things. I, I found this code off the internet. Um, I've just found it to be very helpful. So the output file is um, right here. However, whatever you want the output to be is what you want that to be. And then the last bit on this uh, command is the actual file that you're wanting it to uh, convert to CMYK. You'll notice that mine is uh, the output file is exactly the same as um, the file name but with underscore CMYK so that lets me know that that's the finalized CMYK file so if I hit uh, enter on my keyboard then it automatically uh, converts it now here you're thinking limitations what are the limitations of this um, let me go ahead and show you so if I pull up both of these files here uh, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this but uh, the biggest concern that people have when uh, converting to CMYK is does it preserve black 100%? This does not preserve black 100% when you do this. Um, you'll notice that this copy, the CMYK copy, is slightly lighter than this copy. Uh, if that is a big deal to you, then uh, you're going to want to uh, stay tuned for my other ways that uh, you use open source software in order to accomplish what we're wanting to accomplish here in preparing for print. So uh, this file right here I especially had um, some issues with. Um, if uh, you look right here I've got a, a shadow. This shadow, this especially happens when you have uh, something like this. Um, this is just a uh, Oh, a path that has been, um, I can't even remember the word right now, uh, blurred. There's the word, blurred. And so that especially seems to happen when paths are blurred. And it be looked a little bit too gray uh, on the final copy. And I wish that I would have created this as a TIFF file, which is the third way that I'm going to show you to do this. Um, so, But first of all, let's go ahead and look at the second way. Um, the second way is to export the PDF um, after rasterizing it. And I'm going to tell you why you might want to do that. When I upload things to print to my printers, uh, I'm a broker, so I use a lot of different printers. And sometimes in the display, um, it will have certain parts of the file that are just not, not there. It, they're just missing. Um, and so I think that they call that a trapping issue. Um, I can't be 100% sure on that. But um, the way they get that around that is to rasterize the file first, bring it back into uh, Inkscape, and then with that, create a PDF of it. So let's just go ahead and do that really quick. Um, in order to rasterize a file, you can go Control Shift E. Control Shift E. If you go to File, uh, excuse me, what is it? I don't use these very much anymore because I use shortcuts. Uh, export PNG file, there we go, Control Shift E. You can find it right there in your file menu. Um, I always export all of my rasterized files to my downloads folder. It is my catch-all. Every once in a while I will just go ahead and delete everything from my downloads folder. Um, and the, way, the reason why I do that is because it saves me a lot of space on my computer. I don't need a bunch of rasterized files when I already have the original, the SVG file, on my computer. I can export it any time that I want. And so um, that's just something for you to keep in mind. Uh, it might be a good idea for you. I found that to be the best way to do it. Um, in exporting this file, you're going to want to hit Page. You're going to have uh, the file type right here. You can hit this button right here uh, and navigate wherever you want on your computer and name the file. It's always want to, you always want to end it with PNG because it's going to be a PNG file. Uh, and for print, you're going to want it to be 300. Now, I always do 100, 350 just because maybe I'm paranoid. Um, I just want to make sure 100% this is uh, this file is going to look the way I want it to. 
So with that, then I can export it. Uh, usually, because I save a lot of files as say, uh, side one PNG, I will have this dialog pop up. It says side one PNG already exists. Do you want to replace it? And I'm going to hit replace because um, I have a lot of files in there, and that's the reason why I do. I don't want to blow up my machine with a bunch of unnecessary files. Uh, so here it is now in my downloads folder. I've got side one. Um, so I can open that up. This is just a normal PNG file now. So uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new instance of Inkscape. And open that up. And I am going to go ahead and go to my downloads. And uh, Linux, you can do it. I don't think this is true in Windows, but you can go ahead and drag and just go ahead and drop it into the new file. I, I'm using a dual screen setup, which is the reason why I brought it off the screen. You don't see a toolbar down here at the bottom. Um, I use a tool, dual screen setup. It, it's really helpful to me. Okay, and then with this selected right here, you're going to want to go to Document Properties and you're going to want to go to resize page to content resize page or drawing to selection and that makes if i undo that this is an eight and a half by eleven eight and a half by fourteen uh by default i believe uh by doing this that's uh it makes it the exact size of whatever it is that you're wanting to print then you can go ahead and go to Control Shift Alt S, just as we had done before. And you're going to want to go ahead and save it. Uh, you can save it in your downloads as side one. Side, I've got caps lock on side one. Save. Uh, this doesn't mass matter. Rasterize filter effects, those things don't matter because we don't have any paths uh, or anything to rasterize. This is a completely rasterized file. Go ahead and hit OK. It already exists. That's just fine. Go ahead and replace it. Pull up your downloads. This is the file then that you're going to print. Now, a question, um, and I'm actually wondering this because I've never done this before, is whether or not this file is going to look as good as this file uh, that we had created before. The non-rasterized and the rasterized. Um, and it looks like it's even lighter uh, than the file before. So that's, uh, that's an issue right there. So that's once again the issue with open source software is there's not a really a good way uh, to convert to CMYK while maintaining pure black. Um, but I'm going to show you what I believe is the best way. Um, now this is if you really care to make sure all of your colors match up uh, just right. So I'm going to go ahead, this is my new document with the rasterized. I'm. You can see it's rasterized because if I click here with uh, the um, the edit pass by nodes, nothing pulls up. If I zoom in, it gets all blurry. Uh, I can go ahead and just exit out of that, close without saving. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to open up my original file right here. And actually, you know what? I don't want to open up my original file. We can be done with this one because we're just going to use that rasterized file that is in my downloads folder as I think about it. So this one right here side one PNG. If you right click uh, and open with GIMP, you're going to want GIMP installed on your computer, uh, then you can do what I'm about to do. Uh, but there's something else you're going to have to uh, need. By default, what I'm about to show you is not in GIMP. When you download it, the extensions that I'm about to use are not in GIMP. Uh, if you're using Linux, then you can go ahead and go into your software manager, just type in GIMP, and install GIMP plugin registry, which installs all of the rest of the GIMP files or plugins um, that I'm about to use. And so, what you can do here is you can go to image after you've uh, downloaded and installed everything, you're going to find separate. 
at the bottom of this image drop down list and you can use export right there or excuse me not whoops if you do that first it doesn't do anything uh, separate and then separate and it's going to want you to uh, use or select which source color space uh, I always just use sRGB quite honestly I don't understand all of these things if somebody understands these things better than I do go ahead and uh, post all those in the comments I would love to hear any feedback on these things uh, but it uses this path this file right here in order for the image separation um, and you can hit OK and then hit OK again and it separates it you've got C M Y K all right so with that then then you want to go to um, let's see here image separate export and this creates a TIFF file side one dash CMYK it's going to be in my downloads folder which is where I want it so I can just go back and delete it later uh, and you can go ahead and save you already have a file named side1cmyk that's okay replace it and that is going to give you the best uh, it's still not 100% perfect but it is going to be the best uh, resolution I believe um, if you're using open source it's still not 100% black you can see that I've got some black here uh, and this is just very 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 slightly less um, but it is what it is um, there's no perfect way this is the best way if uh, you're wanting to preserve um, black as best as possible when using open source software so you can upload any one of those files that we just created into or up to your printer and uh, they can use any of those files the PDF or this TIFF file that we just created um, so if you have any questions go ahead and ask me in the uh, in the comments and I appreciate you watching we're blessed bye bye